Hello, I am Chandu Nair handling the course on marketing management. Now we are going to talk about sales promotion management. We have already talked about integrated marketing communications and the role of things like advertising. Now typically for most marketing professionals and for many people, the general public especially, advertising you know, is the more glamorous or perceived to be the more glamorous side of things and it's called above the line kind of promotion. But the other more unglamorous, more unseen kind of promotion is sales promotion and typically this is referred to as below the line kind of promotion. But in today's times and today's context, it's no less important and in some cases and in some product categories and especially for certain kinds of manufacturers and producers, this sometimes gains even more prominence than advertising and there's a lot more expenditure happening out here. So at the end of this chapter, we will get a better understanding of the meaning and importance of sales promotion. We will also see what kind of objectives we need to set for sales promotion, the various types of consumer, trade and sales force promotions that are out there, the linkage between sales promotion, consumer behavior and the process of developing a sales promotion program. So what exactly is sales promotion? Typically, it is a set of tactical marketing techniques to add value to a product or service in order to achieve a specific sales and marketing objective. Usually, because of the word sales promotion, obviously one cannot figure out that the objective is to promote sales and especially sales in the short term. So the name itself tells you what exactly is the key objective behind such a program. So how does one go about establishing and setting up a sales promotion program. First and foremost, one, as in many other things you have seen, the first thing is to set the objectives. Because if you don't know where you are going, any place will take you there. So unless you know where you are going, why you want to go there, then only you can understand what you want to do to achieve that. So first is to establish the objectives. The second is to actually do the planning for this program. Third is to figure out which specific tools are important. The fourth is to check out if necessary, you might want to pre-test the program, then implement it and then you evaluate, get feedback, measure the effectiveness of that program. So there are various goals and objectives of a sales promotion program, then they can be broadly divided into two. One is the proactive, where the company on its own initiates certain kinds of things. The second is more reactive. So let's take a look at each of them. Proactive. A first objective could be to gain additional market share and revenues. So this is like we mentioned, we saw, said or saw earlier, the word sales promotion itself denotes that the objective, the key objective is to promote sales. Second is to expand the target market. If you have already penetrated the market so much, can I increase my penetration, increase and expand the target market, maybe the usage, maybe new users, what have you. Third is to develop a favorable consumer experience with the product by using this set of techniques. And fourth is to add extra value to the product and develop the brand franchise in some fashion. The reactive thing could be a response typically to, custom, to competitive moves. The other thing could be that you have got excess inventory piled up and you need to get rid of that inventory, maybe dead stock, slow moving stock, whatever. The third is very importantly to generate short term cash because of a specific organizational need and the fourth thing because of product discontinuance, obsolescence or closing down of the business. So you can make out there are several objectives and depending on the objective, the nature and extent of the sales promotion program can change. What kind of factors influence a sales promotion program? First and foremost, we have seen time and again we have to look at where exactly is the target market, especially in terms of say buying readiness. We have already seen this several times, so we need not go through this again, but let us just run through the key aspects which is awareness, knowledge, liking, preference, conviction, purchase. So what can I do at each of these stages to instigate you know, certain kinds of call to action? The second is the nature of the product and service. The more standardized the product, the more amenable it is to promotions and typically it's more done for mass products than for customized products. 
The third thing which is very important is to see the stage of the product life cycle and the objectives and the nature of the promotions can vary depending on the stage of the life cycle. If it is introduction stage, one might want to see how to induce trial, whereas it is a more mature stage, one might try to see how to get it, get your share more from competition. And the fourth thing which is very important for us is to figure out again and again, we come across this, the issue of a budget and what money is available for us to spend on such a program. There are various types of sales promotion programs. The one which we are most exposed to as the general public would be the ones oriented towards consumers. But there are two other very important sets of people as well. One is the dealer, the intermediary, the channel and the second is the sales force, the actual sales people selling the product or service. So there are programs aimed at each of them. So if you look at the consumer which is what we are most familiar with and which is what is most visible out in the marketplace, there are a bunch of ways in which sales promotion programs happen. It can be free samples. You will find sometimes, you know, an existing a manufacturer who has a range of products and is introducing a new product might tag along a free sample of the new product along with an existing product. For example, if one is buying regular, you know, uh, soap, you might find a small sachet of liquid soap because the, the company may want to induce you to try out a liquid soap along with your regular bar of soap. It can be money off incentives that if you buy uh, two of them, you know, you might get the second one at a lower price. Typically, you will find this happening in many shirts and so on and so forth. Third thing can be coupons and vouchers. For example, if you are a shareholder of large companies, you might get a voucher to get go to the nearest textile showroom, for example, and get 1000 rupees off on a purchase of so many rupees. So this is again a pretty common kind of thing. Fourth is a gift offer that if you buy, say for example, a big packet of bone vita, you might get a stainless steel you know, bowl free in the state of Tamil Nadu, where stainless steel is very popular. There can be a bunch of competitions and price schemes. We have all been exposed to a huge number of competitions. There are restrictions, of course, in terms of many of these schemes. Plus, typical thing is to offer a discount, you know, or to offer extra in terms of a pack. You can get more per pack at the same price. Or you might get some other kinds of premiums tagged along with it. For the trade, which is the dealers, distributors, other kinds of intermediaries, there are many times sales competitions as well, best dealer and so on. There is also discounts, for example, volume discounts, cash discounts, plus of course free samples, you know, especially if they are buying new products and things like that, they get freebies of many types. There is also money off incentives which are very popular amongst the trade because cash in hand is always welcome. Many times they get certain kinds of allowances to do certain kinds of spending too. There are also things like junkets or trade shows or conventions aimed particularly at the dealers. And in many cases, sometimes companies also jointly advertise along with the dealer sharing the cost or maybe sometimes taking on the complete onus of that advertising with the dealer's name prominently mentioned. So there are several ways by which the trade is also incentivized to promote products and brands. A third critical I mean, another critical element is of sponsorship, which is the sponsorship of particularly when it's a little known product and products want to get out of the clutter. You might recollect in last year's, that is in 2010 IPL, Carbon came in with a bang. It's a new brand of cell phone promoting and, you know, being a key sponsor of uh, the IPL uh, and particularly with respect to a certain category, if I remember right, it was for catches. So, it identifies a company's little known product with a very well known activity. In this case, Carbon, a very little known cell phone at that time with a very well known you know, activity of cricket and with an excellent brand like the IPL. In this very clearly, it is important to see you know, segmentation and targeting. So, Carbon was looking at a little more lower cost phone aimed at a little wider audience. Therefore, this was a good vehicle. And therefore, one must look at whether this kind of sponsorship of specific events makes sense for the company and for the brand. So, if one were to look at it, there is a bunch of activities that one can do under sales promotion. The key objective, you know, the main task of sales promotion is actually to promote sales. 
It includes a huge range of offers and options aimed at three critical constituents. One is the consumer, the second is the trade and the third is the sales force. It's important for us as sales and marketing professionals to set the right objectives, figure out the nature of programs and align both accordingly. It is important for us to use uh, sales promotion tools, especially in today's context and it is on the rise, especially in a place like India where there is so much of competition, there is a lot of clutter generally and there is a very fast changing environmental context.